this is Maria Drushkova. Uh, we are talking about the course on problem solving. And here I am with Sally. Hi, Sally, one more time. <laughs> and uh, we're going to talk about dreams, the important things. So let me ask you, what are your dreams for children and mathematics? Uh Obviously, the child I've thought about most is my son. Um, my husband has an incredible facility with math. Uh, he's an engineer. His mother is a math professor. And so they, they are very comfortable with math. And I never was growing up. I was always uncomfortable. And I would love for my son to adopt my husband's attitude towards math. <laughs> Not mine. Okay. Um, do, do you, uh, so that's your dream? Yeah, to, to watch my son uh, become comfortable and confident and to see math as a tool and a puzzle uh, rather than a frustration. Okay. How is it coming so far? What do you think? Well, you know, he's sort of walking a line. He enjoys it much more than I did as a child, but he still gets very frustrated and upset about it the way that I did. <laughs> okay. So um, he's the son of two parents. Yes. <laughs> How about yourself? Does hanging out with your husband, did, does it help you? I think it does. Um You know, there were there are parts of math that have always made a lot of sense that I have loved always. I've loved algebra. I've loved geometry. They make intuitive sense to me. Mm -hmm. And then there are whole parts of math that seem so foreign to me and I can't relate to, like trigonometry. Um, watching my husband, he always has a lot of different ways of looking at problems, and I find that to be very helpful. And he's very patient. <laughs> it, it helps, doesn't it? Yes. So, uh, so you would like um, the two things you named, uh, the puzzle and the problem, so the use. <laughs> What Can you talk more about these two aspects? Um, so uh, some of the ways that I see my husband and my mother-in-law interacting with math uh, It's for fun. It is looking at all kinds of ways to solve problems using math. And, and they enjoy it deeply. And I love puzzles, but these math puzzles have somehow been beyond me. I don't get the same enjoyment that I get out of them um, as I do out of pattern recognition, um, that type of problem solving. Uh, And then the other aspect uh, is um, a tool for solving daily problems. Uh, so, you know, figuring out what percentage of a book you finished reading. We, you know, we talk about things like that with my son. Uh, It's very hard with electronic books, isn't it? You know, we, I am dedicated to my library. So we read a lot of paper. But that's one reason a lot of people say they like paper book because they can see yeah. where they are in the yes. book. It's, sur it's a surprisingly big reason. It, it really is. I, I have read a little bit on a Kindle and I get very disturbed when suddenly I'm at the end of the book and I didn't really see it coming. It's disorienting. It, it is. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> so um, it's almost uh, like uh, you find these connections finding these connections is fun too right yes It's interesting uh so uh and then of course some level of frustration is a part of the puzzle too yes so how would you say let's say we'll have this 10 problems right with different levels to them mm -hmm. and uh it's Your mission, should you choose to accept it, <laughs> is to adapt them. Right. right. So how do you adapt this 
level of frustration so people don't fall apart <laughs> or your son right <laughs> or me <laughs> or you right you need some well-being and happiness there <laughs> right i think i think um I think a couple things will be helpful. One I think is, you know, when we when I see that he or I are getting uncomfortable with whatever it is, then it's probably time to take a break and come back to it fresh. Uh maybe think about it away from the problem. Mm-hmm. Um rather than my my tendency is to just sit there and suffer. And suffer. <laughs> yes. Uh I think also um I will bring my husband in as much as possible. Uh and that will that's very helpful. My son sees my husband as the math person uh because he's always so passionate about it and I'm much more tentative. And so I will bring my husband in as much as possible to help both of us and to give us fresh ideas and new perspective. And he's very good at that and he's very excited about this project. Excellent. Uh so um, maybe you can uh get some stories from all your family members, your son, your husband, some kind of messages into it. Usually uh one person registers for the site for the project, but this person represents a whole group. Right. So that's the case here as well. Okay. So taking a pause and uh bring in people in who are patient and enthusiastic to yes. <laughs> get some energy and mana out of them <laughs> okay uh about the problems themselves uh, what types of problems are meaningful and interesting how would you say for your kid for yourself can you tweak the problem itself a bit to you know i guess i guess because i haven't seen any of the problems i'm not quite sure how um to approach that question. I mean historically in in your past. Maybe uh-huh. what types of things? For example, let me make an example. Yes, I know it's a big mystery for everybody what the problems even are. <laughs> Everybody's asking when can we see them. So, um in the past, so uh what types of things uh promote that sustained interest or with pauses as needed but returning to it? Um some people for example uh it helps them if they they write about problems and some people say anything that has to do with making things with putting things together or modeling that helps me. So I think I think makes mo- sense what I'm asking now. Yeah, yeah, I think modeling is definitely um helpful for me. I am very visual. And so I need to write things down and, you know, get get blocks if necessary. Whatever it is that helps me visualize the problem I'm trying to solve. Uh definitely. I guess in terms of writing about it, I'm not I haven't tried that in the past and so I'm much more I You you model, you you yeah. visualize, you you draw. Do you draw? Do you like A little bit, yeah. Oh, sure. Okay. How about your son? Uh he definitely likes when we provide him with models as opposed to simply writing numbers on a piece of paper he will run screaming from the room but <laughs> but if you well he he immediately becomes defensive mm-hmm. when you when you put the numbers on the paper and you put it in front of him he he doesn't like to write And so he's much happier when we're dealing with uh blocks or um I built him an abacus last week and that was a big hit. So things like that are um much more have a much more positive effect on him than trying to write something down on paper. Okay. So one modification that seems like a good fit is to take these problems and make them work in physical space somehow. Yes. Mhm. So that's something I expect uh, interesting things as, as you make them work. <laughs> right. As, uh, like this. And so uh what other things does he like to do? So what other Uh he loves Legos. He loves reading. Mm-hmm. Uh he loves outdoor adventures. So 
you know, he doesn't want to walk around the block. He wants to go climb a mountain. Oh, you know, okay. big adventures. Big adventures. Uh, he loves. Um, he loves to play with friends, imaginary games, um, but not play, kind of. pretend play. Lots of pretend play. And he's just really become excited about reading. And so he's been just carried away. I've been just leaving books around the house. And I find him just picking them up and reading them everywhere I, they lay, which is great. And you like to read, so it's a connection. Yes. Yeah. It's great to read with the family, isn't it? It's yes. such a great feeling to read the same books or to share this. So yeah, yes. It's a lot of love. So uh, these things that you name, uh, maybe you can even brainstorm with him, say how had, can he have a pretend play around these problems? Oh, I like that. So maybe with friends or make, you know, put some characters in. Right. <laughs> it's usually whatever topic it is now. Is it Star Wars? Is it... Right. Harry Potter, is it um, some uh, mine, Minecraft? A lot of people pretend play around Minecraft. Yeah. So, oh, yes. So, and building, yes. And again, uh, take something, okay, how can you build it, right? So that's the same interest. With stories, it's interesting because uh, a couple of problems we have kind of come with stories. So you can read the little story. Okay. But I'm very interested in some of the kids like to write or to tell stories. Yeah. So I, I don't know if you are a writer or anyone in the family uh, or if you like to write. I'm, I'm not very good at it. My husband is a very good writer. I'm not sure how much time he's going to have to work on this with us, but we may, we may get him into it. What, uh, what I'm saying, it may be fun uh, for your son to make up a story. Right. Or with one of the problems or to, to make it happen somehow. Yeah. I'm not sure who, maybe grandma, someone. <laughs> Tell us a story, you know, about this. Some kids like to, to talk rather than write, just record themselves. Yes, that that's definitely my son. Or make little videos, like some of these tools actually can be used. So mm -hmm. um, some kids, um, my kid actually used this Skype to talk to grandparents and read books together, so they read through Skype. Oh, that's great! <laughs> well, they live uh, in, in Germany, across the ocean, so it's um, convenient to meet online like this. But anyway, um, so these are just some ideas I, I want to... That's why I talk about the dreams, so the big dreams you have about this being meaningful and useful and like a puzzle playful just to keep this in mind and when we keep it in mind what kids love that's when it happens right right yeah so i am really looking forward to to this experience with everybody with families and with clubs it's gonna be great we're so excited <laughs> great so these were my uh questions uh now that we, we're here with facetime <laughs> What are some of your questions and ideas? Uh, I don't know. I'm, I feel so uh, lost without actually having problems in front of me. Um, it's strange, but I really feel... Um, Monday. Monday, Monday, okay. Um, I think I'm, I'm excited about the idea of having... I'm, I will propose it to my son as a math adventure because he loves, he loves adventure and stories. And so that's the way we're going to approach it. Adventure. Uh, adventure, math adventure. Uh, and I think, I think the idea of bringing it more into bringing math more into our daily lives so that it doesn't seem like um, an other sort of a thing. It, it becomes part of, the fabric of our daily lives, I think that would be uh, perfect, okay. is what I'm looking for. Are there any things in that that bother you yet, or that you anticipate, that you don't know how to start? Um, 
No, I think I think we'll be able to get get going. Uh, we we may have hiccups along the way, but I think we'll we'll get off the ground running. Excellent. So, what is the big thing you you want to kind of figure out as a, as a result of this? The adventure part was was is it the biggest one? I think the adventure part, but I also you know it's it's a challenge for me doing this. I want very much to be able to work with my son without him getting frustrated. Mm -hmm. And so it's really my biggest goal is to keep him comfortable and happy while we work on these problems and and to try to pay close attention to him and make sure he doesn't get frustrated because I want it to be a positive experience for him. I don't want him to have any meltdowns or major frustration over it. Mm-hmm. So we'll we'll see. <laughs> It's a it's an experiment, right? So you can talk about this. Adventures tend to be dangerous, right? So yes. maybe you can capture these dangerous spots. Okay, that was a dangerous spot, right? That's right. when we were afraid. We w- won't survive it. <laughs> right. But uh, I think the framework of adventure helps to deal with frustrations too, because. Okay, here, here we are having the rough spot. We right. are in fear of our lives. <laughs> I think, I think um, it also helps because adventures are supposed to involve um, not knowing. And you're not supposed to know the answer from the beginning. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of math for grade school children is that they are simply expected to know the answer, to memorize the answer. And... So I think starting from the adventure point of view is very helpful because then um, he's not expected to know. He's just expected to think about. And some of these things can have infinitely many answers or no answers. So, yeah. And that's okay. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. If you have any questions about how things are in the course, you know where I live. Yeah. Okay, so, and you can also ask questions of everybody uh, on, on, the, on the group, on the forum. Yes, I got that email about how to contact. Mm-hmm. So we'll have this space, and uh, you have excellent resources in the family, so yeah. things are looking great. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to stop the recording. Okay, thank you very much.